for the reading of the word of the Lord. Thankful for each and every one of you that's here tonight. <clears throat> Try not to hold you too long, but starting with verse number 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. And then the Lord said unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Just two verses of Scripture here tonight. And I want to preach tonight with the help of the Lord, just the title, simply God's Promises. Father, we thank you for your wonderful spirit and presence that is in the house tonight. We thank you for this wonderful privilege and honor and opportunity it is to be in your house. We thank you for your word. We thank you for every heart and life that's here, here in this house tonight. We ask God that you would move mightily in the remainder of this service. Father, that you would anoint me here tonight, that you would speak through me this word as you have given it to me, and that it would all be for your glory, God, and none of it for my glory. All the glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> But just like I said, I, tonight I just want to talk a little bit about the promises of God. And all of us in here at one point in time, or may have, all of us in here at one point in time have more than likely and maybe even possibly more than once have received a, have received a promise or a word from the Lord that uh, God has given us in our Christian life. And whether it may be concerning a loved one or our own personal health situations or financial situations or something regarding our church or whatever the circumstances may be, we face a situation that we begin to pray about and we take it before God and we hear him speak and he gives us a word or a promise concerning that situation to us personally or speaking through another believer. I may, I'm going to start a little slow here tonight, but we'll get there, I promise, but but I just want to talk for a moment and just give a, a quick and a brief outlook. But what does a promise of God consist of? And when we're in prayer or if a person is praying for us, how do we determine that it is from God and not just our flesh or someone else's flesh? Because each one of us in here, we're all human and sometimes our flesh can get in the way. Our flesh can get ahead of God. But just like I said, just a quick, uh, quick brief outlook of that. The first thing to remember and know is that when God speaks today, he will always indefinitely align with his word and the, prof and the principles and lessons that he has given to us in the Bible. He was not going to speak to us something that goes against what he has already spoken and given us, given us in his written word. He's not ever going to contradict his written word when he speaks to us today. And if you're in prayer and you believe like you're hearing from God or, a, or you're hearing from God a word or a promise, I will, I will always tell people, always start by writing it down. Write it down. And then you go over it, you look at it, you read it, and see where it aligns in the word of God. If it doesn't align with the word scripturally, then it was not from God. It was your flesh at some point getting in the way, and it's not aligning with his word. You need to discard it. But if it does align with his word and the Holy Spirit bears witness with you that he was speaking to you, then it was from him and you can hold on to it until it comes to pass. Now, when receiving a word from God from others, I've been to many conferences and revivals and special services with keynote speakers all over this tri-state area and even a few down south. And I participated in all of those altar calls and in those services and asking for prayer warriors, I may get in a little trouble here, but asking for prayer warriors to come and to pray for people in those, in those services and altar calls when you don't know everybody that's there, I believe that Pastor Ronnie could attest that's sometimes almost like handing somebody a loaded gun. <clears throat> the old saying goes and rings true, it takes all kinds. <laughs> but the, there's been many of those altar calls that I have been in that they have all went, they have went great. God has moved and he's spoken mightily. And then there's been some where some folks can get a little sideways. You know, they, they can get a little sideways and they, they don't have a, a harmful or a mean spirit about them. But in all accounts, they're missing hearing from God. You know, and, I, and they're, they're not, they're not mean spirited about it. And they're not trying to discourage anybody. They're really trying to, to, they're really trying to speak into somebody's life, but I got to tell you that nobody is above missing God. 
Nobody is above missing him. It happens. I've missed it, and many in here, I'm sure, have missed it as well. And if we do miss hearing God and trying to deliver a word to somebody, we just we ask for forgiveness from God, from the person, and we move forward, and we allow God to teach us in that situation in discerning what is his voice and what isn't and what he is wanting to speak and do in each moment that we find ourselves in. Now, if you've ever been in one of those altar calls where it gets a little sideways and you're not really sure what's going on, and, you know, we've all been in there, so don't look at me funny when I say when an altar call gets sideways. Listen, I've I've been saved and I've gotten, I got saved in a Pentecostal church and I've been doing it since I was 14 years old. I've been in 16 years worth of Pentecostal altar calls and conferences. Y'all know what I say, altar calls can get a little sideways, (laughs) but, uh, But if you're in one of those altar calls and somebody comes up to you and they deliver a word from the Lord to you that is off the walls and doesn't make any sense to you, you disregard it. You don't be mean about it. You don't be rude about it or disrespectful, but you just say respectfully, I'm going to have to stop you. None of this is bearing witness with what God is already speaking to me in my life. Because each spoken word, regardless of who it's from, every word has a destination. Whether it's good or bad, every word that is spoken into the atmosphere has an ending point. Whether it's over your life, whether it's over my life, the right person's life, the wrong person's life, that word has a destination and an ending point. And if it's not a word that is for you, then you need to disregard it because if it's not for you, then it could cause you to get confused and pull you in different directions. And then the enemy comes in and takes advantage of that and then strays you away from what God's true destination and calling on your life and promise that he has for you is. (coughs) <coughs> hallelujah it's also <clears throat> it's also important when delivering a word from God that we always make sure it's from him that we discern that we are always spending time in prayer that we know what his voice is and that when we're in those moments that we know God I am hearing from you to give this word to this person praise God all right so number one God will always align with what he is speaking now with what he has already spoken and given to us. And number two, he will always bear witness or confirm what he's speaking to you through others. Meaning if he is using somebody else to deliver a word to you, it's usually concerned. It's usually, excuse me. It's usually concerning something that God has already began speaking or showing to you and that he uses that person to confirm that you are in fact hearing from him and that it is a word from him and he is promising to you what you are hearing and you can count on seeing it come to pass. Praise God. It could be something that you've been hearing from God in your prayer time for months or years or it could even be something that you've just begun to hear from him and you're still waiting on that confirmation that that promise and that word is really from him. And But God will always align and confirm what he is speaking. My, my pastor that I had when I got saved pastor Tim Nober brother pastor Jade's uncle he always used to tell us young preachers and and young people in general when we would go out to these services and these conferences they would always tell us that if somebody would pray over us and give us a word from the Lord that God will always confirm it and bear witness to you that it is him by already beginning to reveal it to you first in your own prayer time then using that person to confirm it to you Now, <clears throat> now I've given you just, you know, that short little outlook of what a word or a promise from God may look like and, you know, establishing that many, if not all of us in here have received one of those promises from God and how many can say you have received a confirmed promise from God and then immediately, how many, <clears throat> how many of us can be in those situations where we've received a word or a promise from God, but then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we find ourselves immediately being attacked by the enemy. That all we're just going along, we find ourselves, we're, 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 we're increasing in our prayer time, we're beginning to hear the voice of God, he's beginning to reveal to us things, he's beginning to show us and speak to us things regarding our family members or regarding our, our own lives or our own health or whatever it may be and God begins to speak and then he bears witness to us and he confirms that word and that promise to us and then all of a sudden the enemy comes in like a flood and that attack begins to happen and all of this is going 
on around us. <clears throat> Praise God. Now, our first initial thought is more than likely always what in the world is happening. What in the world is going on? How can this be happening now? I just received this promise from God and now I feel like I'm fighting for my life. I feel like I'm in the storm of my life right now, having already received this promise. But I want to reiterate, Pastor said it last week, and I've heard it from many ministers over the years say it, and it is still very true today, that the will of God will always bring opposition from the enemy. Hallelujah. That no matter what we may be going through in life, that when, God, when we are in the will of God, when we are beginning to get those promises from God, the opposition will always come to try and distract us and pull us away from the word and the promise that God has given us. If you're in here tonight or you're watching by way of live stream and you've heard the Lord about a certain issue and you began to prepare for it to happen but now you find yourself in the storm of your life, I'm here to tell you tonight friend, it's not because God has forgotten about you and thrown you to the wolves, it's because the enemy sees your faith being stirred up after God promised you that loved one or your healing or your breakthrough and he's trying to stop you from believing for it because if he can stop you from believing for from believing and preparing for it then he can stop it from happening in your life because if you don't believe for your promise you won't prepare for it you won't work for it you won't fight for it you won't hold on to his word and therefore it won't come to pass he knows that Jesus said in Mark chapter 9 verse number 23 that if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes if he promised it to you and you can believe for it you can see it come to pass in your life that is why the enemy comes in and tries to snuff out that word and that promise in the early stages because he knows he doesn't. if he doesn't do it early, then that seed and our faith will begin to grow and we will see it come to pass and God will receive the glory and the kingdom will be advanced. You may be in here tonight and you've received a promise from God and you've not seen it come to pass yet and you find yourselves in what, what seems to be the storm of your life. You're not alone, friend, and you're not the first to have experienced this scenario. <coughs> in Acts chapter number 27, Paul has been told by the Lord, Paul has already been told by the Lord that he would bear witness of the gospel in Rome in Acts chapter number 23 and verse number 11. And he, now he is on his way to Rome and he's caught up in a storm called Eurachlodon. It's a hurricane or a typhoon-like storm on the sea. So now not only is Paul caught up in the storm, but he's been arrested. He's now put on this ship and, as a captive and he's headed for Rome. His promise from the Lord was that he would preach in Rome. But now he's been arrested. He's a captive on a ship. And now that ship is in a storm being tossed and turned and beaten while he's on his way to his promise. He's not like Jonah running away from the will of God. He's not like Jonah trying to escape the word of the Lord. He is on his way to the word of the Lord. He is on his way to the promise. He is on his way to where God said he was sending him. And all of a sudden, all of these things come to, come forth. Come on, buddy, help me tonight. <laughs> he's on his way to the Lord, what the Lord had promised him. But he's a prisoner. He's a captive. And he's in a storm. And not only that, he finds himself shipwrecked washed up on the shore of Melita with barbarous people on his way to the promise on his way to the promise it proves the point that I said earlier that the enemy will always come and fight against you receiving the will and the promise of God for your life as soon as God gives that direction or a word and we begin to prepare for it it is when Satan begins everything possible to hinder us from making it to that destination that God has for us and to cause us to give up and to bail out before we see everything that God has for us in our 
our lives. Paul was on the ship knowing what God had promised him, hanging on for dear life, getting tossed and turned and knocked down, wet from the rain, pushed by the wind, startled by the lightning and the thunder. Hallelujah. All the while knowing and believing if God said, I'm going to Rome, no matter what this storm throws at me, I'm making it to Rome, honey. I am going to make it not because of anything that I'm doing, but all because God said, Paul, I'm sending you to Rome. No matter what the storm brings, you're going to make it, Paul. (laughs) Hallelujah. (coughs) Hallelujah. Some of us in here tonight, we need to have that mentality that Paul had and say, I know this storm is bad. I know it looks like it's going to be the end right here and now, but God promised me this word. And if he promised it to me, then I don't have to fear and worry. All I have to do is believe because God has never broken a promise. And friend, I'm here to tell you tonight, he's not going to start with your promise tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may find yourself in a storm. The winds and the rain are blowing and, and, and it's crashing down all around you. But friend, if you could just hang on, if you could just grab a hold of something and hang on for dear life, if you got to, grit your teeth and say, God, I know what you promised me. I know the storm is bad, but I know I heard your voice. And if you said it, God, I believe it. And I know that that it will be done. Hallelujah. Would you give the Lord a shout of praise in here tonight? (laughs) Hallelujah. 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 I remember a few years ago, one of my good friends, Brother Robert Martin, he preached a message titled, God, but you said... God, but you said, and he used the analogy of when children are told something, and I'm sure at some, I'm sure in the near future, I'm going to be having these instances with, with Porter and Blakeland, but he used the analogy of when children are told something by their parents, and then it comes time to do it. It comes time to follow through with that promise or that word that they spoke to them. And he used that analogy of when the parent tries to back out of it and the child would respond with, but you said. Now, how many parents in the room have ever been in that situation on the opposite end? Where you're the parent and you're saying, we ain't got time for this. We don't have time. We got to get going. We got to move. And we just, we we can't do that later. And then all of a sudden you hear that little voice say, but you said, but you said, Hallelujah. Hear me tonight, friend. God's not ever going to back out of a promise. I can assure you that. But you may find yourself in that situation where it may look like that that thing will not ever come to pass right now. It may look like it's the farthest looking thing away from happening. It may look like the enemy has won with the storm that he sent and to try and to keep your promise from coming to pass. But oh, friend, like I already said just a moment ago, if you would just just grab a hold of that word with everything that you have like Paul held on to the side rails of that ship with the wind and the rain beating down on him and the waves crashing all around him grit your teeth and say God but you said it God but you said not a parent said it not a preacher said it not a pastor not anybody else said it but God you said it hallelujah and like I said if God said it friend then you can know beyond the shadow of a doubt that no matter what the storm the enemy may bring your way you can trust and know that God said no word that would proceed out of my mouth will ever return unto me void but it will accomplish everything that I've said it out to do hallelujah you can trust and know that the promises of God are yes and amen meaning that every promise he makes will be finished and completed not just partially but fulfilled and finished all of the way hallelujah what he has spoken and promised to you he is more than able to fulfill for you tonight hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. I'm almost done. I'm I'm almost wrapping up here. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. How many of you know and can believe and, 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 just, and just believe with me that what he has spoken and promised to us in here tonight, that he is more than able to perform and fulfill. That there is nothing. It doesn't matter what, how big the promise may look. It doesn't matter how far that loved one may look and be gone right now. It doesn't matter how bad or what stage the sickness may be. And it doesn't matter how big of a number that that financial crisis you may find yourself looks like it may be. But God is more than able to fulfill every word that he's spoken to us here tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A promise, it goes forward into the future. And into unfulfilled time, marking an appointed time in the future. And when you're promised something by a man or a woman, there is a possibility of that promise being broken or not coming to pass. Now, like I said, we've already established, we've already established, all of us in here are human, we all make mistakes. I have made promises that I have broken. Sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally. But we're all human. We've all been in those situations. Made promises that we weren't able to keep. But can I tell you, when you're promised something by the one who holds and commands the future, that that promise is in. When you're promised something, I'm going to say it again. When you're promised something by the one who holds and commands the future, you can know that it will not go void and will not go unfulfilled. Hallelujah. We have all throughout the Bible a record of divine promises made by God and divine promises kept by God. You cannot find one account in this book where God has not spoken a word and not been able to perform it. There is not one account in this book that I hold in my hands where God has made a promise that he has not brought to pass. Hallelujah be to God. And it's not, it's the very same with us in here tonight. There is not a promise in this house that we have that God will not keep. Hallelujah. Can you give the Lord a shout of praise in here tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul had that revelation. Paul had that revelation. He had that knowledge knowing that if God has given me a word, if he has spoken to me this thing, then I know that it will come to pass. That no matter what else I face in life, no matter what I may face on my way to Rome, I'm going to make it to Rome. Hallelujah. Paul went through the storm, but he held on. Hallelujah. Others were ready to bail and abandon ship, but Paul held on. Hallelujah. He was shipwrecked, but he held on to the promise he was washed up on the shores of Melita with barbarous people but he held on hallelujah he was snake bit while he was on the island but Paul held on and in Acts 28 and 16 it starts off by saying and when he came to Rome Hallelujah, hallelujah. A six word statement at the beginning of a verse, hallelujah. But yet it still establishes a principle that if God has spoken to you a word and given you a promise, then it will come to pass. Glory be to God. Letting us know that God is not a man that he should lie. And if he said it, he shall do it. And if he spoke it to you, he shall make it good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul held on through it all and he made it to where God promised he would get him. And I'm here to encourage you tonight that no matter the storms, no matter the trials, no matter the attacks of the enemy, (coughs) no matter the lies of the enemy, no matter how many others around you are wanting to are wanting to abandon ship and bail out and just say we're done god must not have promised we must not have heard from him if god promised you then you can bank on it happening in your life hallelujah i'm almost done this is my last point here tonight in our first in our first text here tonight in verse number 11 in jeremiah chapter number 1 
the Lord shows Jeremiah a vision of a rod and of an almond tree. Now, why is that significant? That's significant because when you study the almond tree, the Hebrew word for this, for this almond tree, it means awakening, to awake. <clears throat> In the east, the almond tree is the very first to bloom after the winter, symbolizing that spring is just around the corner. The almond tree blossoming is signifying that an event is about to take place. He is showing Jeremiah this vision saying that this, the prophecies that I am going to speak to you, the season and the time is now to deliver them and the season and time to see them come to pass is just around the corner. That's why he showed him the almond tree. He also showed him the almond tree to show him the dependability of God, meaning that if I spoke this, that you can depend on me for it to come to pass. <clears throat> Hallelujah. He showed him the almond tree, signifying that event that the events were coming, that something was just around the corner and just about to happen. And I believe in here tonight that there's some in this house or maybe even watching by way of live stream that the Lord is wanting you to know that he's wanting to show you that this almond tree branch to let you know that the promise he made you is just around the corner. Hallelujah. That don't give up on it. That I know the storm has been bad. I know that you've gotten tired of hanging on for dear life. And I know, but I know that, that, that the winds and the rains and the thunder and the lightning have been bad and scary. But there's an almond tree that the Lord is showing you to let you know, keep hanging on. The time is at hand that you will see my promise come to pass, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you give him just a, a, a hand, hand clap of praise in here tonight? Glory. Glory to God. <coughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. And I'm, I'm wrapping up. If somebody would come to the music here tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Emma. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you would stand with me here tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I know, <clears throat> I know it's hard to hang on. I understand that. I know it's hard hanging on to a word. There's been words that and promises God has given me that I had to wait years for. There's some I'm still waiting on seeing to come to pass. I'm still waiting on some of them. And they were spoken and given to me several years ago. And I understand, like I said, I know it's hard hanging on sometimes. But listen, if you could just catch a glimpse, just catch a glimpse of that almond branch and the revelation that God said, I will hasten my word to perform it. In the Amplified Version, it says that I will set watch over my word that it will be fulfilled. Meaning that when God speaks it and he puts it into the atmosphere, it means that he's setting a watch over it, meaning that he's watching over that word to come to pass. He doesn't just speak it and send it out and just, okay, now on to the next thing. No, he watches that word, saying that I, I know you don't see it now, but I'm watching it. I got to watch over it, and I got to watch over you. I said it. If you'll believe it, hallelujah, you'll see it come to pass in your life. And I know, I'm sure there was many times I found I would find myself just crying tears over that promise, wondering, when is it going to happen, God? When is it going to come to pass? And I believe in, I was in prayer here today and last night, that, I, that there's, I believe that there was some that have been crying tears over those promises. Some, somebody, whether it's on live stream or in here tonight, I believe that you were crying tears last night, wondering, when is it going to happen? When am I going to see it? When am I going to see it, God? But I remember walking this floor, and I'm, I, don't, I don't say these things to get super spiritual. I just, God shows it to me, and God gives it to me, and I just deliver it to you as he gives it to me. 
and I don't ever say it boastful. I don't ever want to come off that way. But I remember I was I was standing in this house and all day today just walking, praying, and I could see an almond blossom blooming on an almond tree branch. And I believe that the Lord said to let whoever that is know the almond branch is blooming, signifying that your promise is right around the corner. Hallelujah. I don't know if that's anybody in here tonight or if it's anybody watching by way of live stream. Hallelujah. But if you're in this house here tonight and you've got a promise that you're still waiting on and you're still believing for it, I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to seek the face of the Lord and say, God, I'm still hanging on. God, I still believe. I still believe you and your word, God. Hallelujah. If you're in this house here tonight and you just want to get closer with God and you say, God, I just want to seek your face in here more tonight. This altar is open for you. Hallelujah. I want everybody to come. If you're Like I said, if you're in here tonight and you're still waiting on a promise, I want you to seek the face of God and say, God, I'm still believing for it. If you're in here tonight, hallelujah, and you've seen promises come to pass, I want you to come and say, God, I'm a testimony that you're a keeper of your word. Hallelujah. This altar's open. Here hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this message, and I hope it blessed you. And please check our description below. You'll find all of our social medias linked below. And as always, please subscribe so we can reach more people. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.